What's going on community? My name is Jansen and today I want to show you this awesome video on how to create pads inside of Ableton Live. Let's take a look. So in my file browser here, you'll see that uh, there are a list of instruments in the categories and I'm just going to drag operator over into a new MIDI track. We don't need this audio track, we can get rid of it. And I'm going to rename this, if you just right click you can go to rename. And I'm going to rename this pad because we're going to try to make a pad. So down here, uh, operator is made up of these four different oscillators. You have A, B, C, and D. And each one of them work off of each other. So the sound kind of starts here and feeds into each oscillator. So I, I'll just play it for you on my little keyboard. I'm using a Nano Key 2 uh, from Korg, just a simple MIDI controller. But you can use a, a really nice Nord piano if you have one of those or some type of foot controller that plays notes, whatever you want to use is up to you, but this is just what I'm using for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to just play a note, and you can hear that note come through. Kind of cool, a very sine wave. Uh, so the second oscillator, I can turn the volume up a little bit, and you're going to hear that sound be a little different now. So it, it, it starts to change the sound because I'm layering in different oscillators on top of one another. Finally, this fourth one, let's bring it up a little bit. So you can already kind of see how drastically the sound changes, right? So you can really create a lot of different sounds and combine them. Uh, so the first oscillator here, uh, if you look over in the middle, we have this envelope display where it shows us things like attack, decay, release. And the cool thing is if you uh, hover over this left uh, collapse menu, it'll actually be the info view can show you what these things do. So there's an attack time, decay time, release time, and if you, if you hover your cursor over these things, you can learn about what they do. But I'm just going to kind of quickly take you through. So attack is uh, the time that it takes from when you first strike the note on your keyboard or your MIDI controller until it reaches the full volume at which you have it set. So right now, it's immediately. So if I strike a key, it's at 100% volume, it comes right in. But if I drag this bullet point over, or you can just click and drag the time up, you can start to see this attack time kind of elongate a little bit. So we want to go to about, let's see what 4, let's just type in 4.5. So that's 4.5, so you want to type in maybe 450 or 4500, sorry. There we go, 4500, because it, it works in milliseconds. So now, if we, from the time we first strike this note, it's going to take 4.5 seconds to get to this full volume. So let's see what that sounds like. Cool, so after 4.5 seconds, 4.5 seconds, we should be at 100% volume. Same thing with here. Cool, right? If I release it, it drops right off, which is this release time here. It says the time needed to travel to the end value after a note off message is received. Basically, when I let go of a key, it sends a, a message to Ableton saying, okay, he's not pressing the key anymore. Go ahead and stop playing the note. Right now, it's at 50 milliseconds, but we can elongate this out if we wanted to, to release after maybe, let's say, seven seconds, six seconds. And let's see what it sounds like when I let go of the key now. So there's our fade in, and I'm going to let go. And now you can see it's kind of a sustain, a release. And so now you're seeing how it kind of shapes the sound. Uh, decay is the time needed to travel from the peak value to the sustain level. So again, you can move this over a little bit if you want it to, uh, from the time you let go. When does it actually start that sustain process? So again, I can start here, the fade in. It's going to be a shorter time for the decay, 17.2. And then six, six and a half seconds or so to, to come out, okay? Uh, and so some of these other things around here, you know, you can change the velocity level, which is um, how fast you actually are striking a key determines how much volume it's going to be given, which is pretty nice. Uh, and a lot of these uh, instruments in here have these kind of settings. Here is where it gets really interesting. There's a wave category here, and it says choose from a collection of selected waveforms, including uh, sine waves or square or different types of things to shape the sound of this synthesizer. So if you click on uh, hardware here on the sign itself, it'll bring up a number of preset 
sounds. So we were on sine, but I want to change this to maybe a saw wave. And a wave is just the waveform of like a frequency form. You can see what it looks like here. So now when I play this first level, it sounds a bit different. Cool, so let's go back to the, bring the attack time back down a little bit. Here we go. And the release as well. So that's a saw wave. Let's do, let's see what a square looks like. So you can see how this even changes the sound. You could have uh, this one be a sine wave, this one be a saw, this one be a square. Uh, we have a triangles. So, and you can actually have them, you know, maybe you have four triangle waves, or you have sine, square, saw, and triangle, four different waves. And so now you're choosing how, what kind of sounds you're stacking on each other. Over on the right hand side here, you have uh, this uh, LFO, and uh, the, the low frequency oscillators are just another, it's kind of like a fifth oscillator that you can use to change and shape the sound a little bit. So you can have this. We're not really going to use it for the pad. Uh, because I, I'm not going to let it affect this, the pad sound. That's what we're going for today. Uh, so there is even a filter. You can choose uh, what type of filter you want with cutoffs um, and the slopes between them, uh, the frequency. So if I play a note, I can click and hold this frequency and take it down a little bit. And it starts to cut off some of the higher frequencies. Like right now it's at 868. So anything above that gets cut off. But if I open up the filter a little more, it, it starts to bring in those higher overtones and frequencies, which is what kind of what we want. Uh, same thing with um, the resonance, the strength of those frequencies that are near the cutoff of the main frequency itself of the wave. So again, you can just play around with these and see if you can get different sounds of what you're looking for. Uh, pitch envelopes, you can turn this on to try to see you know, how much it, how long it's going to take for the pitch to actually because you have this kind of a glide and it shapes it I can go the other way too and kind of go down so now we're kind of getting some like EDM type synth stuff so you can really be cool it's kind of cool so uh, I'm going to zero that back out uh, spread and transposition if you wanted to kind of up the transposition uh, this this is the note up the same note I was playing but if I bring it back down to zero, you know, it can transpose in half steps. So the last category has time, tone, and volume. This is kind of your master output that allows you to shape uh, the timing of the notes, the tone, and the volume uh, overall. And then there's this like weird Tetris piece that looks here. This is really awesome. If you click on this, it's going to open up the algorithm display. The algorithms are basically the way that the, the, um, the stacked oscillators are being modulated. So right now, we have just the vertical bar, which is A is going into B, is going into C, is going into D, and that's what's being output. But if I change it to, say, the square, uh, A and, it looks like A and D, uh, C are being put side by side, and then they're going through B and D. So A is going into uh, B, and C is going into D. Or, uh, I'm sorry, A is going into C, B is going into D. It's kind of hard to see, but it changes the shape of the sound. So let's see what that sounds like. Here's the first one. Cool, and then I can go over here and kind of see how it cuts off the low end a little bit. Let's go to this one. Finally here. Yeah, see how it's kind of really muted? So you can really change this. Even if I have these, I'm going to bring, I can change the frequency levels of these. This is where it gets really interesting. So I'm going to bring down some of the frequency levels of each oscillator so I can get more of a mellow tone. Let's see here. And let's see if we can change the oscillator a little bit. So just kind of mess around with this and playing around with it, you can kind of figure out what the tone is that you want. And by bringing some of these down, it really helps kind of mellow out the tone to create that really nice pad sound. So I'm going to boost the volume a little bit. I kind of like where it is. 
So now that we have that kind of set, uh, let's bring in some effects and see if we can't get this thing to really start sounding like a pad a little bit. Cool. So the first thing I, I love to put inside of a pad is a reverb. So it can come up here to the audio effects tab and there should be a reverb down here. I'm just going to drag the reverb and drop it in. And so what's happening is this instrument output is going into this audio output or audio effect and that's coming out through the master display. So now that we have this on, let's see what that sounds like. So a little bit of reverb. Let's uh, boost the stereo all the way up, bring the size of the room down. I'm going to kind of make a couple of adjustments. Bring the decay time up a little bit. And let's make it really cool. Okay. Let's see what that sounds like. Cool, and you can really just get very interesting with like the chord shapes, right? So. So something else you might want to put on there is maybe some delay. There's kind of a cool concept that comes in. Uh, I believe we were going to put this before the reverb. And I'm going to take the dry wet here, turn this frequency all the way up. And we're going to pitch shift it to 12. See if we can't get some feedback here. It's a little bit too much. Bring this frequency all the way down. Add some shimmer in there. It's, it's a little too much for me, so let's bring the feedback down just a little bit. The dry wet down a little bit. And then we're going to put a compressor in here to kind of boost the overall sound. So let's put a compressor here. Let's see where we're at. The threshold down and maybe like 80% will boost the output a little bit. Okay. Cool, right? So now we have some pad going on that has like a lot of um, shape and a lot of sound in here and, and we can really start to tweak this. So uh, if I wanted to start out with a triangle wave here, the second is going to be a sign. So let's chain that, uh, change it to another triangle, see how that just changes the sound. A little darker. This one is a sign. Let's change it to a saw, maybe like an eight voice one. third at the end there. So cool guys, that's pretty much uh, a, a basic pad using operator. There's a lot more that you can do with it just by changing the operate uh, the sounds, um, you know, changing these courses will actually affect the, the relationship between the initial note and the pitch that you want. So if you want higher octaves or lower octaves, uh, if you want to even kind of detune things a little bit, you can do that using this fine tuning. Uh, but if you, it really is your playground here where you can actually even draw in your own way for each oscillator. And then just by adding a few things like a compressor, a little bit of delay, grain delay to kind of pitch shift things if you want a little bit of shimmer uh, and some reverb, it really helps it kind of pop and will open it up a little bit. So I hope this has been really good for you guys. Uh, that's basically how you create a pad in Ableton Live. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple, but 
there are a ton of possibilities and sounds that you can get just by kind of trying out different things. So take some time, play around with it, and I hope this video has been really helpful to you. Until next time, see you later. Thank you.